Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraAutomation.com and today in this video we are going to talk about NBomber performance testing tool and once again this is going to be exactly the same kind of operation that we tried doing in our last video where we were discussing about NBomber to perform an HTTP load testing but in this time we are going to see how we can make use of NBomber load testing along with Playwright to perform a web-based performance and load testing as you can see over here so in this particular demonstration as you can see we are spawning up n number of browsers same time and it is also executing certain scenarios using playwright so basically it's like a marriage between playwright.net and nbomber to perform the load testing for us and we are going to see how we can get the report out of this particular load testing and we can see the performance of our application in much much easier fashion and at the end of the execution you are going to see a report something like this as you can see where it is going to have the entire details of what happens with the particular execution and the details of the failures if there is any and there is a pausing time frames and stuff so let's see everything in an action in this particular video so in order to do that, I'm going to get to our NBomber test that we wrote in our last video while we were doing the HTTP performance testing. If you have not watched that video already, please go ahead and watch the Norex Zero Automation YouTube channel. It is already there. So for doing that, I'm going to write this method, which is going to be pretty similar to this one. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it. Let me rename this to HTTP performance test. And this is going to be a web browser test with Playwright. And over here, I'm going to write all the tests as I'm looking for. But not to do that, I'm going to first of all add some NuGet packages to make this happen. So I'm going to install another package this time, not just the nbomber, but also what is called as an nbomber.web browser. So if you just go and search for nbomber.web browser, something like this, you are going to get this particular nbomber.web browser. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. And I'm also looking for a Playwright library because that is important for me to drive the UI operation. So if you're not watched the Playwright video series in my YouTube channel, please go and watch there. We have extensive list of Playwright with cshop.net and we also have courses in Udemy. So please go and watch there for making your life easier with the framework development and how you can enhance the way you can write the Playwright with cshop.net code. This video, as you can see over here, is going to make you that happen. But again, if you already have some idea with Playwright, so this is the package that you are going to be installing essentially. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. And once I have this, then I can start writing the code over here. So once again, for the Playwright, as you already know, in order to launch the browser, you're going to be using the using var Playwright and then you need to call the uh, playwright.create uh, async method. And because this is an async method, you also need to use the await keyword. Uh, and once you have the uh, Playwright instance, you then need to spawn a browser because that is what is important. And I'm going to do that in a different way. I'm just going to say a weight of using a var of browser is equal to a weight uh, Playwright dot Chromium. And I'm going to launch the Chromium browser. And then I'm going to launch the browser in a head full mode. So that's the reason why I also need to pass the browser type launch option. And over here, I'm going to specify the headless as false because as you know, the Playwrights browser are always by default, the it runs in headless mode. So I need to make this as head full mode. So for doing that, I need to just set this to false over here. That is the only thing which I need to do over here in order to make the browser to be visible as you saw in the demo before. And once you have it, we are now in the territory of the N bomber itself. If you remember, in order to create a scenario, we used to use this var scenario is equal to scenario.create. That's exactly what I'm going to do this time as well. I'm going to say var scenario is equal to uh, scenario.create method. And over here, I need to pass the scenario name. Basically, I'm going to say the scenario is going to be a uh, maybe web browser testing with uh, Playwright or maybe web browser performance testing with play right um, something like that uh, and then I also need to pass the context over here so I'm gonna say context which is gonna be this one okay so this is gonna be the one just looking for creating the scenarios for me 
And now over here, I'm need to perform the operation, which is going to be the login operation, for instance. So if I want to perform any login operation over there, all I have to do it is I'm going to say var of page is equal to a weight of the browser. You remember the one that we just created for the playwright? I'm going to use this browser and I'm going to call the new page async method, which is going to create a new page for me over there. And once I have the page, I can then perform all the operation as you already know in the playwright. Because once you have the page, you can then navigate to the page, perform a click operation on the UI and perform all sort of operation. So in order to do that, I'm going to say await page dot uh, go to async method. And over here, I'm going to use one of the most widely used application that I have in my courses in Udemy as well as in YouTube, which is nothing but the eaapp.sami.com uh, website. And I'm going to just use that because it's a publicly available website. And over here, I'm going to perform a click operation on the UI. And then I'm also going to see if that works or not. So I'm going to say page dot click async. And that select art is going to be text of uh, login. So I'm going to click a login link. So if I've not seen that before my website, uh, the eaapp.swami.com, the site is going to look something like this. And this is the link which I'm trying to click using playwright and i'm also going to test how much time it takes while i run with around like 9000 user for example so that's a pretty dramatic uh, way of doing a performance testing of your application as you see at the moment i'm spawning like 89 requests in a minute uh, for the previous test execution and that's what i'm trying to do over here as well i mean i can keep on spinning that up as much as i wanted to but i'm trying to keep that very simple so I'm going to click uh, that over here. Uh, and then I also am going to do some performance testing kind of stuff within this playwright test. So basically we are running the performances, right? We need to know what is the response which is coming out of this execution. If it is an okay execution response or what is the transfer size and stuff. So in order to do that, I have a library inbuilt or an extension method which is inbuilt from the nbomber team which is the get uh, data transfer size. So this is an extension method, which is part of nBomber web browser package that we just installed. And it also has a playwright library extension, as you can see over here. This is interesting. This is what I need. This is gonna give me the total number of size it is uh, transferring during the execution, which is gonna be helpful for you to get uh, in your report while you run them over here which is interesting so that is what is this method is going to do and then you can say response return response uh, dot okay and you can also set uh, the size byte which is going to be the total size that you just got it from the earlier line of code and once i have this i can then perform the rest of the operation if you remember the one that we tried doing it before like this one as you can see over here I can do that. I can just copy this uh, and then I can paste them all over here. So let's try just copy pasting it from our earlier code, which is going to be without warm up. And then I'm going to run the load simulation. I'm going to inject 50 uh, for like 10 milliseconds and the ramp up period of like one minute, which I'm going to keep on doing it. I can increase the rate to like 100 or 1000, depending upon my load size and stuff. All right. I think that's all we have to do. And now before I execute this test, one more thing I have to do is, as you know that this is a memory intensive application, and if I wanted to run this particular application, I require quite a lot of physical memory. At least as you can know that I have 64 GB of physical memory over here. I'm gonna run this entire performance test over here. But even before I actually do that, I also need to ensure that I free up the memory as much as possible. And the way I can actually do that is by just closing the page instance once the test execution is complete. So the way I can do it is uh, I can just say like uh, weight of uh, page dot uh, close 
async method, something like that, so that it just closes the page after this execution is fully complete and it doesn't wait for me for the entire time over here. And once again, just a word of caution, because this is going to be a resource intensive application, sometimes you may need a higher physical memory, like a RAM in this case, so that you can run the test without any problem. And once everything is done, and now if I try to run the test, you will notice that the test is not going to run. And I just wanted to make this point a little bit expanded this time. Like if you just use the uh, load simulation dot inject, you will notice that the browsers are just gonna keep on spawning, but it is not going to load the applications or the page for you over here. It's just, as you can see over here, I have got quite a lot of uh, browsers being spawned up, but it is not really navigating to the page. And the reason why this is happening is because you can't really use like a new inject like how we did with the HTTP request. Because over here, we need what is called as a ramping constant for the load simulation before we actually do that. Because in here, you actually need to wait for the page to load so that it can work as expected. That is what Playwright also tries to do it for you while the page actually loads and then you perform the operation there. And in this case, the page itself is not loading and your test is eventually going to just give up and it's gonna fail as you can see over here. So quite a lot of page being opened. So in order to avoid this particular problem and even before I go any further, I'm gonna stop this entire test. I'm just gonna change the load simulation from new inject to what is called as a new ramping constant. And that's something I wanted to prove the point that this is how things are gonna happen. And then I'm gonna set the new constant with the copies of 30. And then I'm also gonna specify the minute over here as one minute. That is the duration that I'm gonna specifically specify over here. And once I do that this time, and now if I try to clean the solution, and if I try to rebuild the solution, and if I go back to my hyperterminal over here, and if I just do a .NET test this time, you will see hopefully it is going to open up the browser for me and it's also going to navigate to the page as you can see over here. This is how it shows that you also need to make sure that you, you use a new ramping constant instead of just using the new inject like how we did with the HTTP request. And you can see that now it's just keep on bombing up with quite a lot of browsers for me over here. And that's how it does things for me over here. And it's gonna keep on bombing for one minute because that is the duration that we have specified and it's running the performance test for me on that particular page. And as you can see that it is spawning up so many browsers for me behind the scene and it's also closing them as well. And it requires quite a lot of physical memory and that's the reason why I'm keep on insisting you that you should ideally have quite a lot of memory while you actually run the performance testing in your case. And you can see that my memory is, yeah, it's been spiked up as well, quite a lot. And then it's gradually reducing because the browsers are being killed over here once the test execution is fully complete. So let's wait for the execution to fully complete. And there we go, it has completed. And we have got a report over here. I'm gonna just copy that. And it also says that there is some failure over here in the performance testing. Uh, and there are four failures out of 134, which has been executed. So if I just go to the page, uh, and then if I try running it, you should see that there are four failures uh, and there are 130 execution happened. And this is what is really happening behind the scene for me. And you can of course get all the matrices and stuff as you know. And finally, I also wanted to show you some more important thing in this particular execution, which we have not seen before, which is nothing but the step operation within the scenario. As you know, within the scenario, we also have got scenario.create method. You also can have what is called as a step.run method inside the scenario, which means every single scenario can have multiple step and you can have multiple scenarios as well within your test execution. And over here, in this case, I'm just going to get rid of this particular code as you can see over here inside what is called as a step. So what I really mean is that I can just say await step. This is a class within uh, nbomber and then you can say run 
And here you can see that say that I'm going to be executing a home page to a login page, uh, probably uh, loading test. That is what I'm trying to do. And I'm also going to specify the context and I'm going to say an async of uh, this particular method over here, right? And I can now paste all this code inside in here. So this is going to be like a one step operation that you're trying to do. You can get rid of this guy from here, the closing operation, and you can paste it in one single place so that even if you add one more step, which I'm going to do this time using a different locator altogether, which is going to be this uh, another step, as you can see, this is basically going to be on the home page. Uh, and then to the login complete and then to the home page. So basically I'm going to do a login operation as well, uh, along with filling the username and password and then clicking the employee list page. And then I'm going to perform uh, this operation in this step. So basically this is going to be just to perform a login link click operation. And this is going to be a login complete operation in this particular step. So there are two steps within one scenario over here. That is what is the whole idea. And once I have it, I can then just say return uh, response dot okay method of the embalmer. And hopefully you got the idea what I'm trying to do over here. I'm gonna make this copies to probably 50 of them. Uh, and I'm gonna keep running this this time. So there are two steps this time, not just one step like how we executed before. Uh, and this is the new concept as well. You just learned this time. So let me try to reformat, clean up the code so that you can see that it is more readable. And now if I try to run the test, we'll see how it is going to perform. So I'm gonna just say .NET test. So now this is gonna run two steps for me in the same time. And we'll see how that operation is gonna work out. And you can see that the test execution is complete this time. And I'm sure there are going to be quite a lot of failure this time. And we'll see what is really happening behind the scene. So if I just go to the new report, so I'm going to get, grab this folder where the report is being generated. Uh, and I'm going to go to this location. And if I just open the page this time, you are now seeing quite a lot of failures then compared to last time because we had like four errors before. And this time we have got around 29 failures. And the 29 failures are something to do with our execution itself, as you can see. Basically, it says that we are going to see um, run a login page loading test. And then we're also going to run the home page to login complete and to the home page. So this is like we're running it for the second time. Uh, and this is all failing because we are expecting certain uh, page to work uh, and there is a timeout happening while our application is not even responding to that particular request. So that is really happening behind the scene for us over here. And that is what this particular report is telling us over here based on the latency. And you can see that now the minutes have increased tremendously, like around 2.9 seconds for every single execution, which is huge. And then it also has got sudden failure based upon the RPS and stuff. I could see that if we add more load with the different scenarios within our application, there is a failure of our application to process the request. And that shows that the performance of our application is going down based upon the number of users and the different scenarios. And that proves the point that we have found certain issues based on our load testing. And it could be something based on your machine as well. If you are running in your machine and if you have less physical memory, this could be one of the reasons why your performance can go down. It depends upon the network speed and network card and stuff. So it is ideal that while we run these kind of tests, we should have a very good machine, the good spec. And at the same time, it should be running on cloud to ensure that it is nothing to do with our machine, but it actually identifies the issues in the target machine, which is the place where the website is really being hosted. So hope you got the idea of how you can run the performance testing using Nbomber and Playwright by writing quite a less code and with all your knowledge in Playwright and C-Sharp.net comes in handy while you run the performance testing. Catch you in the next one. Thank you.